In case you missed it, New Zealand's Prime Minister and Finland's Prime Minister were just asked if they were only meeting because of their similar age and other common stuff. Yeah, a lot of people will be wondering, are you two meeting just because, you know, you're similar in age and, you know, got a lot of, you know, common stuff there, you know, when you got into politics and stuff? Or can Kiwis actually expect to see more deals so, between our two countries down the line because there first, is... I mean, my first question is I wonder whether or not anyone ever asked Barack Obama and John Kerr if they met because they were of similar age. Uh, we, of course, uh, have a, a higher proportion of men in politics. It, it's reality because two women meet. It's not simply because of the agenda. Yeah, we are meeting because we are prime ministers. <laughs> of course... The fact they have to answer that question that way is ridiculous. So that's Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, and the Prime Minister of Finland, Sana Marin. You guys may recognize one of them because we did a story previously. We'll let you guys know about that. They were asked these questions by reporters. And sometimes when women answer those questions by saying, are you saying because we're both women? Then, oh my God, that is the question though. Is there some reason why you guys are meeting? Are you guys gonna be discussing recipes, maybe hairstyles? It's the question that just comes with how odd it is to see two female leaders standing in front of you talking about stuff. But it's not the first time she's uh, that Arden is best. It's not the first time though that Jacinda Ardern has been asked these types of ridiculous questions though. Here's a little bit more of that. It's insane how much this has happened. Watch. Really important political question I want to ask you, and that is, what exactly is the date the baby's due? The <laughs> seventeenth of June. <laughs> the seventeenth. It's interesting how much people have been counting back to <laughs> the conception, as it were. <laughs> really? really? Well, well, having, having produced six children, it doesn't amaze me that people can have children. Why shouldn't a child be conceived during an election campaign? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it will not why should. I'm not asking why should. No, I don't no, say no, why I shouldn't. But I should add that um, the election was done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was over. What? Because a lot of people count back when they find out that someone is pregnant to find out exactly which day did you guys do it. Asked on a, I assume a national program. That was like the 60 minutes of, of uh, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, so uh, there it is with, I can't get over the creepiness of that and the way he's leaning in all greasy. So when did you guys do it? Because that's what we wonder, was it during the campaign? Was it right after that speech? I saw you were fired up, what happened after? Jesus, this is a politician we're talking about, a leader of the country. Either way it goes, more about this because Jacinda Ardern had to deal with more of this. Here's more, here's more. I've met a lot of prime ministers in my time, but none so young, not too many so smart, and never one so attractive. How's the hair doing? After the dye. Well, why are you dying it anyway? Is it going grey or something? Why didn't you dye your hair for? Never, never, never. That's not a polite question to ask. Is it possible to ask Jacinda Ardern the question that goes like this? Something on the lines of this. <clears throat> okay, so you have now chosen uh, your career over having a family. You need to know that type of thing from the women that you're employing no, because, no, because legally, no, 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 no. legally you have to give them maternity leave. It's weird, these questions. And actually, it seems pretty similar to the things that many conservatives in this country would like us to talk about. So why aren't you having children? Are you married? What are you gay? Why aren't you married? Why haven't you had children yet? What are you trying to do, like have a career, be a politician, run the country, have aspirations? What's the matter with you? Are you a real woman? It's, But it's all baked into these questions, even though they don't say it as blatantly with that. That's the whole thought process behind it. One other part about this, because there was two leaders up there. As I said, maybe you guys recognize the other, Sanat Marin, who was caught, busted on tape dancing, which made them think she must be on drugs. Dancing? Watch that. Finnish Prime Minister Sanna Marin says that she's taken a drugs test in the wake of video of her partying being released earlier this week. Now, this is the footage that's doing the rounds on social media. She and friends, including Finnish celebrities, are seen dancing and singing. She attracted criticism from opposition parties and told a press conference on Friday, never in my life have I used drugs. At 36 years old, Ms. Marin is the youngest prime minister in the world. If they can't control uh, these women that are in positions of power, they just are uncomfortable with everything that's happening. So um, really fast, Dan, I know there's probably a lot going on, but I at least want to point out the, the thing that I actually met for. Uh, Marin is, the new, is in New Zealand for her first official tour. 
marking the first visit to the country by a Finnish prime minister. That's a that's notable. After a bilateral meeting on Wednesday morning, the two leaders affirmed the warm relationship between New Zealand and Finland after and their commitment to boosting trade opportunities, tackling climate change and deepening ties. Ardern said, our countries are aligned on incredibly important issues. We share a strong commitment to democratic values as the basis for open, tolerant, resilient, equal societies and to multilateralism and a rules based order that has underpinned global peace and prosperity since 1945. But when's the last time you had sex though? Are those drugs? <laughs> These are the questions. Yeah, I'm glad the stars align and we're doing this story because this is a TYT classic I hope is also rotten in your brain somewhere. Do you remember when also there was like, I believe this was Australian or New Zealand press and they're asking some tennis star about this like really big win they had and they're being really successful. And the tennis star, the reporter keeps asking inappropriate questions about her life and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we get that you're really good like on the court and what off, but like, but how's it going outside the tennis? Right, like Jesus. They're, they're doing all of these like, it was just like a joke. Like, why is, and I think that's a note about like British press, Australian press, especially, they're especially kind of like crude in this way and need to catch up in a lot of ways. Their sexism, their racism, their homophobia. It's really insane. We just don't pay a lot of attention to Australian media down there. But the, it's, I'm really glad that uh, they're these people, like, these leaders are pointing out these questions because I think sometimes I think as a black person I saw during the Obama administration and Obama would like bite his tongue during certain situations because of the perception of his reaction to something. Because then of course the conservative media would then feign being offended by this reaction. And I'm not sure, not sure what the blowback or backlash is here. I'm sure that some people are attempting the same in Australia, but or like in New Zealand and in Finland as well. But the I, there's this idea that they're getting asked these questions in 2022 when uh, foreign dignitaries meet all the time. Uh, you never talk about men and when they're having kids and uh, what time they conceived or under what circumstances. Or you never talk about when men go out and go do parties or whatever uh, they're up to, unless it happens to be Hunter Biden. Like it's. <laughs> Always this double standard that you get when it's a political adversary. I, it, the only time the left ever brings up on the right is usually just to point out this hypocrisy. Because otherwise, we don't care. Go ahead and have fun as long as it doesn't interrupt, interrupt what you're doing in your levels as a policymaker. Uh, growing and changing and progressing past our normal ways we always did things, it takes some effort. Maybe it takes some pain for some people. It take, definitely takes discomfort because their normal approach is if I see a woman that's in a position of power, she has to be old, decrepit, and, and ugly to me. Let's put it that way. That's obviously what it is. It's okay if it's if she's 75 years old. She can be a leader because she's past childbearing age in their mindset. Uh, uh, she's not attractive to me. I have no reason to control her anymore because I'm not thinking about having sex with her. So fine, now you can be a politician. When they're younger, the question is always, what is it you're doing? When was sex happening? How are you guys meeting? You're not talking about other things? What's the matter with you? You have to change the narrative and the thought process of the way things used to be because it's obvious it's just not that way anymore. And that's when the controlling energy start coming like, well, I can't release control over women. There's like what I do. It takes, it takes a little bit of opening up your head to realize that these folks aren't what you think they are or what you want them to be.